Welcome. First of all, Happy New Year. It's going to be a really exciting year. Welcome to our show. Uh, we have some really fun things to share today, so let's get to it. I want to talk to you about three things today. The first one is probably no surprise to you. We're going to talk about tablets. The second thing we're going to talk about is another surprise feature of Tegra 3. As you know, we've been talking about Tegra 3 for about six months. And every few months or so, we introduce a new capability in Tegra 3 that people are surprised by. Today, I have another one for you. And the last thing, I want to talk to you about cars. The new consumer electronics device. Okay, so let's get going. Well, a couple of years ago, all of us started talking about tablets. We started talking about tablets for the first time here at CES. Since then, the tablet has become the fastest growing consumer electronics device in history. Just as computerized technology has revolutionized the phone, turning the digital phone into a smartphone and in the process revolutionizing the services that are made available to you and the way we use it, just as digital music was revolutionized by computerized technology, turning a CD player into a iPod, we're doing the same thing with tablets now. It's made possible because of the touch technology. The first year of tablet sales, about 20 million. An enormous success, and people thought, maybe, uh, most people thought it was a surprise, uh, but some people thought it was a fact. Second year comes along, sells more than 60 million. First year, about a quarter in tablets were non-iPads. The second year, nearly 40%. At this point, I think it's relatively clear that this particular category is going to continue to evolve and continue to grow. The question is how will it evolve and how will it grow? Hard to say exactly what the analyst projections are going to be, but for all intents and purposes, it is going to be a very large industry. This particular segment, this particular category, is a crossover between mobile devices and computing devices. Sometimes mobile, sometimes computing, most of the time wonderful. This particular, this particular category is now evolving in a way that we see uh, other devices have evolved over the years. The automotive, automotive industry, for example. Although the fastest and the highest grossing sales car in, in the world is the Toyota Corolla, we don't all drive one. Although the F-150 it's the most popular selling truck since the 48s, since 1948 when it was introduced. We don't all drive one. Some people decide they start with uh, their consumer car and they use it to uh, work purposes as well. Some people start with their work car, like a truck, and they use it for recreation as well, like the truck. Different, different strokes for different folks. <coughs> And a lot of people have their own choice of cars. My choice happens to be the red one. It's, a, it's pretty nice, actually. 4.5 liter V8, 3,000 pounds, delivers 562 horsepower at 9,000 RPM where it redlines. When it redlines, maximum speed just a little bit over 200 miles an hour. Fabulous experience, a must have for anyone who's a car enthusiast. <laughs> Must have. And, and for some people, the Dodge Caravan is the must-have car. Not as attractive as the red one, but it packs a bunch more kids. For soccer moms, it is a must-have car. So each one of these cars serves a slightly different need. We believe the tablet market will do the same thing. Some people would have a a mobile-centric experience and would like to have most of their digital content in their phone. There are some people where typing is just too important to them and therefore to slide it. There are some people where reading is just an, an essential part of their experience. Maybe they would like, the, like it to be a folio. They could put it in a purse. There's American tablets. There's Chinese tablets. There's going to be tablets for every country de designed for their culture and for their sensibility. There are going to be tablets that are designed primarily for touch, but there's a lot of tablets. And if you happen to know an artist, 
The ability to have a digital pen is just completely fabulous. Having a touch device, a surface that allows you to understand and recognize the pressure of a pen allows you to really create on these devices. And of course, there are people who enjoy having a tablet as well as a keyboard, and the two combined goes into a transformer type of device. Now, the thing that is, that is a problem, though, is that when we introduced the Android tablet last year, we effectively fragmented the marketplace. We took the low end, not the low end, but the mobile, the cell phone devices, running on gingerbread, and we separated it effectively from the tablet-oriented devices, the content enjoyment devices, the media enjoyment devices, the tablets, on running on honeycomb. Honeycomb essentially became an ecosystem of its own. And because it was not the same as gingerbread, it was not the same platform, honeycomb was out there fending for itself. It was related to Android, but it's not the same as Android. We have solved that problem recently with Ice Cream Sandwich. Ice Cream Sandwich unites, unifies, and turns all of the Android devices into one single platform. All of a sudden, whether you're a 10-inch tablet, a 7-inch tablet, a 5-inch folio, whether it's a slider, a 4-inch phone, 4.7-inch, 5-inch note, it just doesn't matter. They're all part now of the same ice cream sandwich platform. And as a result, 250 million Android devices growing at 700,000 activations per day are now going to be one enormous install base for content developers. In the final analysis, install base and the richness of the platform ultimately attracts content developers. We expect that this to be a big shift in how people think about Android devices. It's no longer just going to be Android phones and Android tablets. It is now going to be a collection of Android devices. One size doesn't fit all. Different <coughs> strokes for different folks. However you would like to enjoy your mobile device, Android now makes it possible. So with that, let me give you some. Let me give you a demonstration. All right. Let's play with this a bit. Ouch. Okay. So first of all, um, I've got this uh, Asus Tech Transformer Prime, and it is a fabulous tablet as well as a fabulous clamshell, fabulous notebook. The way that I'm going to enjoy it for you first, just very quickly, let me just take it out of its dot. This is an um, ice cream sandwich. Everything is running at 60 frames a second, basically locked to refresh rate, so everything is buttery smooth. Smooth like a baby's bottom. <laughs> I love that. Um, one of the things I really love about about the ice cream sandwich are these folders. So let's go into an application, and well, you know what? Uh, let me show it to you guys. Docked back in, and um, change this No. Okay. So we can go to HDMI, please. And so uh, it has these these uh, these folders and all kinds of great applications. About 14,000 new applications are coming into the marketplace each month. And now with an installed base of 250 million Android devices, it's a pretty rich opportunity for content developers to target. Uh, this is Fandango. It's optimized for, for the tablet, as you can see. Uh, a really great movie, uh, 1010 rendered with NVIDIA's technology. If you haven't had a chance to see this movie, you really ought to try. Uh, look, at, look at this. It's an active application with these widgets. And look at this, look at this uh, screenshot of Tintin. Extreme use of global illumination, wonderful hair simulations, wonderful water simulations, high dynamic range, particle simulations everywhere. This is the most realistic movie ever made. 
The guys at WEDA did a fabulous job, and it was fun to be part of it. Uh, the water simulation is just completely amazing. The fire simulation, all of it, state-of-the-art rendering technology. And so that's Fandango. Um, let's take a look at another application. So, um, you know, there's all kinds of applications here we can go through, but let me show you one of the best. This is Snapseed, and uh, this is one of the top applications ever made for mobile devices. It's the number one app for iPads, and, uh, and as you know, a lot of people use these tablets to take pictures, and wouldn't it be great to make them better or to stylize it? Now, I, I, could, um, I could certainly play with this a bit, and I played with it over the holidays to uh, enhance some of the photos that, that uh, we made while we're on vacation on Maui. But instead of doing this myself, why don't we have the creator come up and do this? Manual? This is an amazing application that you guys created. Um, you know, instead of instead of me doing it, and I, I, it, it is so easy that even I could do it. But the fact of the matter is, you do it so much better. Could you could you tell people about this application sure. and uh, give them an example of how incredibly simple it is to improve your photographs and why it is that this is the number one application for the iPad? Sure. So um, Snapseed um, is something we created based on our professional imaging tools, technologies we have, and uh, we're set out to create something that anyone can use anywhere, anytime. And uh, in that context, it's great that we can also now have it here on Android, and your team that has been a great supporter, it's a great experience to work with the folks at NVIDIA to get it here on Android. So what you see here, as our interface, it's kind of straightforward. You have on the left-hand side a lot of tools you can pick from. I will use the drama here to show quickly how the interaction is. Because that's, that's the only thing you need to know and learn about <coughs> Snapseed. Um, it's a purely touch UI. It's something we have optimized for, um, for you're touch. Looking at, you're looking at the entire user interface right now. Exactly. That I mean, there is, when I first launched it, I thought, gosh, there's either a manual, there's some drag down, there's, there's nothing. This is it. Exactly. As soon as you touch it, everything shows up. Exactly. You touch it, you move your finger up and down, you see here, and you can select the parameter. And then you can go left and right to adjust it. So I go down here, change saturation, I go back, up, and you see the saturation coming up again. And that, that's all you need to know. So that's how you use now, the Now, the thing that's really interesting is, is um, these type of effects we usually do with Photoshop and you apply the effect and the system goes off, the PC goes off and, and of course it crunches on it as it applies the effect. And just now as you, were, as you were showing us this, you were literally just dragging around with your finger and the effects were being applied instantaneously. And when, um, when Manuel mentioned earlier that our engineers and your engineers work together, it's really about utilizing the GPU and the programmable shading capability of the GPU to apply these special effects in real time. Absolutely. If you think about it, not long ago, only desktops, workstations could do these kind of effects. And uh, having this now at the convenience of your, of your sofa, laying back, editing some pictures, it's a, it's a great experience. It really helps people experience photographs differently. Now, this is one of the favorite favorite things I did all holiday season <laughs> is the press compare exactly. before and after. This is just so cool. Now show us another example. Yeah. So another thing we have here, and uh, another technology of ours, is the viewpoint technology. It enables selective <coughs> editing very easily, and a touch screen is almost perfect for, for, for that tool. Let me show that here on, oh, sorry. <laughs> That's not a different picture. We already, made, we already improved that one. <laughs> So let's, let's look at this couple here. Now this, uh, to, to be frank, this picture is actually pretty beautiful. It's hard to imagine making it more beautiful. Let's see. So what we have here is the selective adjust. It uh, powers our viewpoint technology. And viewpoint means you point on something on the screen. And now you can influence that area that you, that you have selected. So now I can change the brightness up or down. And I want to take it down. 
background less prominent. Change the size, influence area a little bit. You see up here, they're still probably a little too bright. Take that down. And again, it's the same interaction. So what you've learned before, up and down to select the parameter, is something that you do here also. It's the exact same interaction. So as I said, you learn once you know. Now all of a sudden, the couple really pop. Now let's compare it. Yeah. That's really amazing. Isn't it amazing, guys? Of course, of course, uh, you, you, the audience would, would like love to know, and, and we didn't rehearse this, but but um, what's next in in you know in mobile photography and touch-oriented photography? You know, what what is beyond this? Where do you think this industry goes? I think I mean th that is a starting point. Uh, we really see um, the power that is available to us growing on a monthly basis. I mean, Tegra Three is something that that really enables more than, than we could do in the past. And seeing that coming will bring more and more tools to, to the tablets, to the mobile devices. So um, who knows, uh, one day you may do all the editing here. Um, and uh, I think we're, we're a good step towards that direction. We better keep making great GPUs for you guys. We appreciate it. <laughs> all right. Manuel, thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Are you ready for CFC, the number one application on the iPad now finally available on the Android, running on Tegra. Okay, so um, that's, the, that's the number one app on uh, the iPad. Having great applications, obviously, is, is more important even than having a lot of, a lot of applications. Now, one of the things that's, that we know about application downloads is that the leading category tends to be video games. And the reason for that, obviously, is, is games are fun and, and, uh, and, and we have a lot of time to waste. And so, so this is a very important application space. Uh, what we decided to do was create a store within uh, the Android marketplace that is curated and that brings, and that brings only the best games that are optimized for the device that you own. And we work with the content developers all over the world to make these games as wonderful as possible. Uh, what highlights certain games Every single one of these games are available for uh, either either a small price um, or available for free. And, um, and you know, this particular store is designed just for games. And just to give you an example of one of the games that are available on here. Oh, by the way, one of my favorite applications, my favorite features of Ice Cream Sandwich. Check this out. Multitasking, I'm done with these. Let's go ahead and close those up. Pretty fantastic. Okay, so let's see. This game was just available on the PlayStation 3. Um, runs fabulously on this Tegra 3 tablet, but what's interesting is for the first time, uh, it also runs with these game controllers. And so if you would like to enjoy your video game at home in this posture, which most people do. Okay, you hit the boost. Let's go. Let's go. A little audio would be nice. Come on, you guys. It's on my tablet. What, was I supposed to turn up the audio? Frames a second of using the skin control to do it. And bouncing off the walls like a maniac. Okay. So, premium games, um, great games that you expect to see in, in a game console available on a, on, a, uh, on a tablet near you. Okay. Let me get out of this. Before I do that, oh, get out. Get out. There. That gets me out. Okay. I'm sorry? <laughs> Okay, next, I'm going to show you another first of its kind. Um, 
video games, a uh, big genre for tablets, and, and millions and millions of, of uh, games are being downloaded on tablets today. Uh, the, one of the genres that's really, really large and really important to attract the enthusiast gamers is first-person shooters. Now, first-person shooters is fun, but nothing is as fun as first-person shooters in a multiplayer setting. It has never been done before, and we thought today it might be kind of fun to take a game as advanced as Shadowgun, something that looks like a console game, but to play it in a multiplayer setting. And so I've got a couple of friends down here who are um, playing their games. Hey guys, what are you guys doing over here? What's that? You got a little land going? Well, let's see. Does anybody? You guys see this? HD gaming, 60 frames a second. And now these guys are all playing each other over the land. So this brings a new way of enjoying video games and mobile devices. You would think that it's a mobile device and therefore it's connected by nature. Wouldn't it be great if you could enjoy it in this multiplayer setting? Now I'm watching these guys. You guys, you guys are pretty good. But what, who's kicking your butt? Both of you guys are, are glowing red. Now, I just, is there somebody in the audience that, that is taking, who, what, who's doing this to you guys? Who's doing this? A guy named Jonathan, is Jonathan in the audience? Jonathan Fatality Wendell. This guy. <laughs> now, I mean, he looks like a, a well-adjusted kid, but but you guys might you guys might know the fatality. What we call when we call talk about him, we, we talk about him. We call him fatality. But but anyways, Jonathan is the best first-person shooter gamer on the planet. And, um, and at his ripe old age of, of uh, I, don't, I don't even think you've turned 30 yet, have you? 2010. Oh my goodness. He's, <laughs> he's just turned 30, he has a lifetime of cheating work. What is that about? Yeah. Yeah. Lifetime of cheating work. Good sportsmanship. <laughs> Good sportsmanship. I, uh, I always uh, shake hands with my opponents before I play him and after I play him, so I try to uh, as a sport and so uh, good sportsmanship so that's been a, uh, a goal of mine since I started competitive That's gaming. terrific. Now, you, you also, you're, you're, you're humble. But this is, you, you've won so much money playing video games. Now, now um, you, you, what, what did you tell your mom and dad about, about your career? Well, I had to move out my mom's house to pursue it. <laughs> uh, but um, after uh, you know, winning over 100 grand my first year of professional gamer and then uh, Getting on 60 Minutes and Front Page Business Week, uh, you know, starting my company, Fatality Gaming Gear, they uh, they really uh, saw the lights, I guess, that I'll try to show them. You know, when you're bringing home six figures or seven figures a year now, it's uh, listen to exciting. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen to this guy. They, they, they have something out of the house. I can have yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's terrific. Okay, thanks a lot. All right, so that's, that's the first time that that anyone's ever done multiplayer first person shooter a a a twitch game where latency is so important performance is so important frame rate is so important and, and we brought in brought in the best first person shooter on the planet and uh, hopefully we'll introduce them to a new new platform jonathan's been using g-forces his entire career and now we'll get him to uh, to enjoy tegras as well Okay, so I got another application to show you. This is one of my favorites. Um, this, this is a really cool application. This is a really cool application. So it's called Splashtop THD. Splashtop is one of the top iPad applications. They've sold 5 million copies. Uh, it's the number one application. It's in the, the number one application in a lot of different countries. Its purpose is to allow iPads to remote into a PC. The problem, the problem is when you remote into that PC, the fidelity is rather low. Resolution is typically 10 by 7, so re relatively low. It's um, not very responsive, but you can surely get access to your Word files. You can get access to your, 
your documents, but the concept of being able to remote into your PC and have the full fidelity of your PC and the full capability of your PC is, uh, was never, never possible. And today, what I thought I would do is show you guys for the first time the ability for Splashtop to remote into your PC. Now I'm remoting into, uh, through this wire here, if it wasn't because of all of you guys would do it wirelessly, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, we wired into this PC here. Now this PC has a GeForce GPU in it, and so it's, it's wonderful, it's high performance, and um, uh, I would just love to be able to sit on the couch and enjoy it. And so let's, let's enjoy it a bit here. Um, one, of the, one of the first applications I, I think uh, would be kind of fun to, to uh, enjoy. I would be able to enjoy it if my mouse worked. <laughs> All right. Tom Peterson, help. <laughs> So, okay, we got it, we got it, we got it, if it worked perfectly, it wouldn't be a demo now, would it? Hey Jonathan, this is music from my generation. Look at that. Right there on my tablet. That, that's enough of that, huh guys? <laughs> I, I think we could probably do some of this. I usually like listening to Timberlake when doing Facebook. Look at this. And this is our Project Inspire. This is our Christmas, instead of Christmas holiday parties, we do Christmas charities. This is all of us building a kitchen. Everything just works. Everything just works. PowerPoint. Look at that. Everything just works. Video. There's no way video is going to work. There's no way this could possibly work. Wow, it just works. So this is Splashtop THD, which allows your Tegra tablet to remote into your PC, treat it like a server, and everything just works. In the full resolution you like it to enjoy, every application, it's as if it's right here. Now, of course, um, you know, those things are, are relatively simple in the final analysis. Those things are relatively simple. Video, um, PowerPoint, uh, iTunes, web browsers, everything on the web, Flash. Those things are relative light, relatively lightweight com computing applications from our perspective. You know, what if we took a, a game that just came out? It just came out just a few days ago. <laughs> Now, I'm sure this is going to crash. There is no way this could possibly work. So, so um, let's... <laughs> I hope I just didn't jinx myself. <laughs> so this is Skyrim. This is the latest game that just came out. And uh, this has been named one of the top games. You know what, instead of me playing, hey, Jonathan, come up and play this for us. <laughs> you get up. You... Hey, guys, this is uh, Jonathan Wendell. It's, uh... 
the app where it has no problem. Yeah. Yeah. I can I genuinely say that we've known you since you were a kid. Exactly. Since I started professional gaming. It's been about 12 years now. All right, cool. Hey, which one of our G forces did you like the best? I mean, the main reason why I've been using GeForce is mainly because of the drivers and the software to use them. Obviously, it's very powerful to play the video games, but uh, to go in and change a lot of the settings, which I personally do for a perfect game, I'm trying to manipulate uh, the graphics to the best uh, power out of the frames per second and so forth, so I can gain the highest ability. So, um, you know, I've just like, used all of them, so <laughs> I'm looking forward to uh, doing a two-way SLI probably uh, uh, on my next ring, so I'm building a new system right now. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Three-way SLI. That means three GPUs. Three GPUs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Very happy news. Yeah, I got. Uh, this will be pretty sick. I mean, I've had Alpha three a lot right now, so. Okay. So this is our over the cloud uh, through splash. No way. That's not possible. I mean, that's not a video, right? This is actually very responsive. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing how how you can play a game over uh, a streaming service like Splashdown. You know, play a game like this. And so, can you guys imagine what's happening right now? So Jonathan, his controller, controlling this tablet. The tablet is streaming over to the PC. The PC renders the graphics. It compresses it, streams it back to the tablet. And it does it so fast that it's completely interactive. You can play the game. I mean, you can see it right here. Uh, you match it on the dragon, and it just blows up. I'm taking the soul right now. But it's very responsive, me axing him and everything. So. Playing games becomes very possible uh, on this device. Wow, that's fantastic. Good job. Good job. Okay, so that, all of that demonstration right there was done on my favorite tablet. It's my favorite tablet, but it also has become my favorite computer. And it's the Asus Tech Transformer Prime. Now, the engineers over at ASUS did a fabulous job with this design. It's a thin tablet, it's the thinnest tablet in the world, it's also the, light, it's the lightest tablet in the world, and it's full HD, and every, everything you do is 60 hertz. It's just buttery, silky smooth. When you attach it, it automatically connects, and you have a keyboard, and the keyboard works perfectly. It works exactly like you, you expect it to work. In the morning, every morning, I go through all of the the news that you guys write in Google Currents, and it aggregates all of the news. I go through it in 45 minutes or so, I drink a cup of coffee, I'm off to work. At night I come back and I catch up on all of your news during the day, and I sit on, sit on the couch with it in a tablet way. The thing that I was showing you today was ice cream sandwich. The buzz in the industry has been so high. We were the first to bring a dual core tablet to the world, we're the first to bring a quad-core tablet to the world, and today we're delighted to announce that the engineers at ASUS and the engineer at NVIDIA have been working around the clock over the holidays, and today it just got approved by Google, Tegra 3, Transformer Prime, ice cream sandwich will be available today. Really excited about that. Um, you know, to, to uh, invite a special guest up, the inventor of the netbook, the inventor of the Transformer Prime, the inventor of the Transformer Idea, one of the great designers of PCs in the world, a close friend, somebody we've worked worked closely with for almost two decades, and I think together we've we've got must have shipped almost a hundred million computers. I'd like to welcome Jerry Shin to the stage. Please. Thank you, thank you for coming. Welcome. And first of all, congratulations on yet another wonderful creation. You invented, you invented really the mother, the mo modern motherboard industry. You then invented the netbook, and the netbook became the fastest growing 
PC category in history, and then now you invented uh, the transformer. Can you tell us what, were the, what was the inspiration? What caused you to invent the transformer? What were the ideas that you had that, that ultimately resulted in this wonderful product? Yeah. Funny you, not that you asked. Uh, because uh, when we, we, we have the idea, we try to create a tablet uh, with the extra uh, touch screen experience and also uh, with the productivity of network mm -hmm. with incredible audio and the camera. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And as a result, people can use the transformer, whether it's a, as a media consumption device sitting backwards on a couch or laying in bed, you could be reading a book, reading a magazine, or watching a great high definition movie, mm -hmm. or you could have it docked mm -hmm. and use it for, for productivity. Yeah. Um, obviously, as I've shown you just now, you could use it to create a PowerPoint slide, you could, you could use it to write email, of course, and it's a, it's a wonderful productivity device. Now, you know, people are so excited about, about uh, this new category. The, the reviews have been wonderful, and, and I think everybody's been really gracious in receiving this new idea. And it made, a, made, a, made, made us realize that uh, there's innovation still left in the tablet market, that we're only two years into it. And, you know, we've been working on PCs now, coming up on 25 years, and we're still coming up with ideas. And so we're two years into the innovation cycle of what is likely to be a very important mobile computing segment. Um, but but I, th I think everybody says, you know, gosh, the transformer, it's got, it's got everything. And it's, it's the, the luxury um, uh, version for somebody who would like to have a great 10-inch tablet, high-definition tablet, and a great keyboard. But there's this whole new segment that's growing incredibly fast. It's selling like gangbusters, frankly. It's, the $199 price point, $249 price point, these media tablets by Fire and Nook, they're growing like, they're just selling like chickens. Now, you know, what can we do? How do we bring a versatility and a richness of a tablet experience to a price point like the Fire and the Nook? And, you know, if we could solve that problem, if we can have our cake and eat it too, if we can create this wonderful tablet that's also affordable, we can sell it like chiclets. Don't you guys think? Wouldn't you guys like that? Wow. So how do, we, how, do we, how do we do that? How do we get there? How do we get this technology? Today, I want to show you something really incredible. <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually, uh, this one. Uh, this machine uh, with the, the with the uh, core Tegra 3 ice cream sandwich and also the we have the incredible incredible sound and also camera that's the world best camera and this one with also very high higher resolution this is the almost the same this is the same inch but the all the feature almost the same the world best this is the machine, and um, we dream, we think we can really create another segment. Here so this is, no kidding, so this is, um, it's quad core, it's Tegra 3, actually, so it's actually five cores, Tegra 3. It's, uh, it's got a great camera, ice cream sandwich. This, is, this thing is going to, this is worth $399. Uh, we can do better than that. <laughs> $399 with the technology in here. Now, do, you, do you think we, can, we might be able to work really, really hard together and bring it down to $299? Oh. Uh, better. <laughs> <laughs> all, of this, all of this resolution, this great camera, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, how, what can you do? What, what, tell us what you can do. Uh, we want to achieve the Magic price, two forty nine. Wow! It's quad core. It's every touch I just made sixty hertz, twelve by eight resolution. A fabulous camera, battery life all day. You can use it to read books, watch movies, 
play games. Everything that we saw on Integra Zone, all of the everything that you saw earlier in the demonstration we just made, all possible at 249. This is unbelievable. This is terrific. Thank you very much, Jerry. He keeps reaching out for, to shake my hand. I think here we go. Thank you. That's fantastic. <laughs> there you have it. Another amazing device from ASUS, this time at 249. Well, as you can see, that there's the ice cream sandwich platform is really, really coming to its own. There are hundreds, there's several hundred million devices in the world based on Android. You now have 400,000 applications growing at 12,000 per day, per month. And now these applications are not, not only abundant, they're also wonderful. So I think, I think this is going to be a big year for Ice Cream Sandwich, and Ice Cream Sandwich unifying all of the Android devices into one singular platform is a big, big deal. Really, really excited about that. Behind all of these devices, and you saw the first version, Asus was the first to bring a Tegra 2 tablet to the world, they were the first to bring a Tegra 3 tablet to the world, and now they're the first to bring a Ice Cream Sandwich tablet to the world, and they're about to show you the first $249 Tegra 3 tablet. There are many, many tablets and devices and mobile devices coming with Tegra 3. Tegra 3 is the world's first quad-core mobile processor. But several months ago, we surprised the industry that it wasn't just four cores. We call it a quad-core, but it actually has five cores. The fifth core is really considered a ninja core. A ninja core. This Ninja Core is sneaking around extremely quietly, very, very low power, and as a result of this Ninja Core, this fifth core, we're able to achieve simultaneously very low power, very high battery life, and on the other hand, extremely high performance. And so, uh, Tegra 3 is the world's first mobile processor with what we call variable symmetric multiprocessing, variable SMP, five cores. The second thing we, had, we talked about was to solve this problem with backlight intensity. As you know, the backlight is becoming the vast majority of the amount of power that is consumed. And in order to keep the battery life long, many people have resorted to just dimming the backlight. But the problem with dimming the backlight, as you know, is that you lose image fidelity. One of the technologies that we created, we call prism display technology. What prism display technology does is allows us to retain the fidelity of the image by dynamically adjusting the backlight, changing the color at the same time. We've separated the color and the intensity of the backlight, adjusting them both dynamically on every single pixel, on every single frame, and as a result, recapture the fidelity while reducing the backlight. The technology is called Prism. Today, we would like to announce a new technology. Touch is what's caused the mobile computing revolution. Touch is at the center of the tablet re revolution. The touch controller is not only expensive, it consumes power, but it's a vital part of the experience. This is an area where we believe we want to take the experience to the new level. Today we're announcing a technology called Direct Touch. We've taken essentially the analog to digital conversion signals directly into our mobile processor and using our fifth core which is running many, many times faster than any microcontroller you could possibly have on the motherboard. That fifth core running a few hundred megahertz will allow us to sample your touch many times higher than the best touch controller. We call this direct touch. Very quickly, let's show them a video of what direct touch does. You see here the original Tegra 2 tablet and the sample rate, as you can see, goes down to about 80 frames, 80 samples per second, 60 there. And here's direct touch. About three times the number of samples per second. As a result, your experience is much, much more responsive and it's just buttery smooth. Direct touch. Our last surprise before we start shipping Tegra 3 devices. Really, really excited about that. 
the number of OEMs around the world that are now working on direct touch devices is just spreading. Now next up, this year is a particularly special year. Windows 8 is coming to market. I don't remember another Windows version as exciting as this one since Windows 95. We've been working with Microsoft and their engineers for coming up on 20 years. We have 2,000 engineers working at NVIDIA who are dedicated to the Windows platform. From Windows this to Windows that, big, small, and finally, just as Windows 95 enabled a new class of devices, consumer PCs, I believe Windows 8 is going to enable a new class of devices, this time moving Windows to mobile devices. This is an epic event. We're really, really excited about it. And to come and uh, talk, uh, give us an update on it, please come on stage, Aiden Marcus. See you next time. It's been, a, it's been an amazing year together. It has been. You know, just last CES, we were showing an internal development build of Windows 8 running on a Tegra 2 reference platform. And this year, we've got a Tegra 3 reference platform running the latest internal development preview of Windows 8. And it's just an example, I think, of the great collaboration we've had. We showed a lot of GeForce GPUs running on Windows 7 today. Um, and as we brought Windows 8 to the ARM platform, it's really exciting to to work with you at Tegra 3. And just think, people want the Windows experience on mobile devices so badly, they're streaming it from PCs. Yeah, I mean, right? Spectrum is the perfect can, example of that. We want a remote desktop. Mm -hmm. That's terrific. We're right, right here. Um, and so what I thought I'd show you today is just a little bit about the about Windows 8, where we currently stand. Okay, let's see it. So this is a reference platform, and I'm right here at the lock screen. Now, the lock screen shows me what's important at a glance. And one of the really cool things I want to show you is at the bottom, you can see that apps can actually register here as well. So I can see what mail and calendar and IMs I've got. And these take advantage of a feature in Windows 8 called Connected Standby, which uses Tegra 3's low power idle mode to be always connected and up to date, even though I haven't had the machine on. And it keeps great battery life as well. So my device is ready when I am. So when I'm ready to go, I just swipe my finger up, and I'm at picture password. Right, so this is a touch-first, secure way to log into my system. So in this case, this is a picture of my son. I'm going to draw a line on the table. I'm going to tap on his hand and draw a circle around his head. And just that easily, wow, cute kid. I'm logged into the banks. I'll tell him that. Um, I'm logged into Start. Now, Start really is Windows 8. Um, it's where all of the things I care about are right here. So I've got tiles that represent the applications I'm interested in. They're alive with up-to-date information. And you can see here we've got a bunch of developers we've really started to work with to build interesting, compelling applications for the new Windows platform. Now, um, you know, as I pan, it sticks to my well, finger. Yeah, and so a, a, one, of the, one of the questions that I get a lot is that, that um, you know, the, the netbook, when it first came out, uh, consumers were confused by the limited capabilities of the netbook. And when they loaded applications, full-out applications on these netbooks, and they expect them to be real PCs, um, full-out PCs, they find that the experience was lacking. And one of the questions that people have is, how do we prevent from the repeat of the netbook experience this time? Because this particular platform is actually based on an ARM processor <coughs> instead of x86. If somebody were to load, for example, SAP on this tablet, um, it might not run very well, for example. And so how do we prevent that experience from happening? Sure. So in Windows 8, the, the store is actually where you're going to get applications. And so the Windows Store is a really easy place to find great applications. And it's really built to be super easy to find. And you know, this is the modern way that people get applications. Mm -hmm. They go to stores. It's really easy to navigate and really easy to install. It's install. not like I'm going to get a DVD and try to shove it somewhere. <laughs> That's right. There's no DVD shoving. There is no, 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 yeah. no install whatever, right? But, you, you know, know the store, you down. But you actually raised a good example, too, with SAP. Um, for enterprises, they can take these tablets mm -hmm. and bring them right into the enterprise and actually do loading of applications the way they're comfortable, mm -hmm. do their own deployment. So this device will be just at home in the enterprise mm -hmm. as it is on your couch, I see. which is really important. Now, the other, the other question that I get often is, is um, you know, Windows, obviously, is that we believe long-term, there are going to be multiple platforms and multiple ecosystems. There are some people whose computing experience starts um, with what they compute at home and they bring that computer to work. Some people call it the consumerization of IT. 
Um, other people like myself, we have computers that we use at work and we bring it home and we put all of our digital music and our photos uh, onto that device. And so the, we believe that there's multiple platforms, but some people think that, that you know, gosh, Windows on ARM is, or Windows 8, um, is a couple of years behind uh, other tablets. There are hundreds of thousands of applications now available. How are you guys going to evangelize this platform and get people excited about it so that you have great applications on it? Yeah, and it's, it's a really important point. It's actually one of the things that we're going to start working on together. We've just started sharing details about our store. You know, our store is going to run at the the reach of Windows, which is the reach of the world. We're going to launch in 200 markets when we launch Windows 8 in more than 100 languages. We're going to let you use whatever business model you want. Free, paid, you can use our commerce platform, you can use your own. Mm -hmm. Which for things like game developers and all sorts of different um, developers out there, it's really important for them to use the business model that works for them. Now, if you use Okay, ours, so if, you're, if you are a content provider and you would like to build a content platform around Windows Store, mm -hmm. and and you would take care of the economics yourself and, and the commercial engine yourself, uh, they benefit from from that in a special way? That well, they, can, they don't have to give you 30%? That's right. They can bring whatever model works for them, which is really important. Now, if they use our model, mm -hmm. they can get up to 80% of the revenue back, no earning more in every single dollar that goes to the Windows Store meaning that they can operate their business just that much more efficiently with that much more revenue. Um, and you know, these, this whole store brings new applications like this sample app. And one of the really important things is this is an RSS reader. Now, this is full screen and immersive and it doesn't look like a Windows application today. And it's written on this new platform called the Windows Runtime, which is important because it lets a developer use a language they know. So this is actually written in HTML5 and JavaScript. Yet it takes advantage of all of the power in all four cores of this uh, Tegra 3 processor. The sensors, and you can just imagine the sorts of powerful experiences you can build. That's fantastic. But you can also use C, mm -hmm. or C++, mm -hmm. and build the sorts of compelling games that you showed off earlier. Well, we all, we all know that, that uh, Windows and Microsoft has the best developer development platform on the planet. And I think that, that is, that is, a, that is a, a, a advantage that Microsoft has and, and an asset that you guys have invested in over the long term. And now with the with the Windows Store and the economics and the flexibility that you guys are bringing, I think it's going to be pretty fantastic. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. In the next couple of months, we're going to be using units just like this to start working with developers to build a whole bunch of very compelling applications and experiences for Windows. I can't wait to ship it. Yeah, let's do it. Thank you, Jensen. That's great. Congratulations. This is going to be a fantastic tablet here. Ice cream sandwich, of course, and then Windows 8. Such probably the most anticipated product that I can remember building in the last 20 years in the PC industry. Um, one of the things that I want to talk about very briefly before we go is a brand new consumer electronics segment. Nothing is more uh, captures our imagination like a beautiful car. And um, the car industry has been advancing in developing new technology on a pretty relentless pace until two years ago when Audi introduced the connected car. It's possible for you to now do search, browse, you could, your, uh, your uh, navigation is based on Google Earth, you can look for restaurants, and then the entire web is now available on, in your car. If you can think about the type of applications we use in mobile devices today, imagine projecting that into your automotive uh, your favorite car and imagine the capabilities. The Audi A7 has won so many awards and all highlight its ability to be connected and bringing the entire web experience, the entire mobile experience into the car. But this is not going to be the only one. In a few days, we're going to announce with Audi something really, really special. So keep your ear out for that. But the electric car <laughs> is so energy conscious, it also needs, and because it's leaning forward technologically, it also benefits from the revolution of mobile computing for this particular car. Tesla Model S will have two Tegras in it, one for the digital dashboard and one for the infotainment system. And it, bring, it gives me great joy to know that even the fastest cars in the world would adopt the fastest mobile processors in the world. And the uh, Lamborghini Aventador uh, is going to include a 
Tegra processor in it as well. So from super phones to super cars, we're going to see the mobile computing revolution revolutionize these devices, revolutionize the business models, and of course revolutionize the experiences that we have. I want to thank all, you all for coming today. Enjoy CES.